But before we talk about expanding to new town centers, let's talk about when to do that. So here's my uh, updated city. I've gotten a few new buildings here to talk about. Uh, I've added my marketplace in the set, uh, space that I set aside for it, and uh, I've added two traders. Now two is the maximum number of traders that really uh, make much of a difference. All the traders come down on their little rowboats and stop at them, they'll stop at one or the other. Um, you can definitely get by with just one, um, but the trader uh, has all kinds of huge benefits. For one, it's, it's the way you get seeds, and it's the way I was able to get livestock. Uh, pretty quickly, which is is quite beneficial. Livestock is, is really an efficient source of food and also of clothing. So I've, I've taken sheep and I get wool from sheep and I'm, I'm able to switch to warm coats, uh, which is great. Um, but I haven't yet done any mining, so I'm still on the regular iron tools. You can get coal or even uh, steel tools directly from your traders if you go that route. Uh, you don't even have to do mining. In fact, uh, I haven't done any mining. I haven't done any quarrying. I have no no qu uh, quarry. I haven't switched to stone houses yet, just to preserve my stone, given I'm not quarrying any. Uh, but I've done basically every other type of building. I have my town hall here, which gives me lots of useful information. I have my chapel, which makes people happy but it's not totally necessary especially not at this point in the game I would I would say you, you probably want to hold off on the chapel until you have probably two town centers worth of people uh, tavern you don't really need but that keeps people's uh, happiness up and the hospital definitely don't need it this early in the game uh, but it's there just to show you that that's totally possible and uh, my schoolhouse is humming along I still only need one schoolhouse and uh, traders are coming along, and when a trader like this, the food merchant, comes along, you can trade for kinds of food you don't have. So you notice I haven't done any farming yet. I haven't done any orchards. Uh, you don't really need to. So I, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate, even if you don't buy these, um, you have enough food variety in these other more efficient methods that, you know, you, you if you have your your eggs and your beef and your fish and your mutton and your venison and your roots and everything from uh, the other buildings that we've already built you don't really need all those other varieties of foods and especially if you go with the trader early you can trade for these other kinds of food that you wouldn't normally have access to uh, for instance pumpkin and squash um, and I can just go ahead and buy 500 pumpkin and squash and it'll go into the market and people will get it um, and it'll make them marginally healthier. Uh, so for instance, I, I bought some corn, uh, but if I didn't, it, it really wouldn't make that much of a difference. The health is in pretty good shape. We can see that in uh, the citizens graph from our town hall. Uh, happiness and health and education and clothing are almost max uh, clothes is at max because that's that happens quite easily if you just have a ready supply uh, we're at like 98% of these other things uh, let's see can we get a number on that yeah if we go to overview um, you can tell like the educated number is at 98% and I think that's where that line ended up so we're at like 98 or 99% for absolutely every metric of success. And we have no farms at all. Um, and one of the most common uh, mistakes that you can make is using up a bunch of your land and a bunch of your citizens' time trying to provide a variety of vegetables when really, you know, if you have a nearly endless supply of beef and ale and onions, that's, you know, that's, as, that's about as happy as a person can be. Um, that's one of the things I might tweak if I was trying for a harder difficulty uh, setting is that you you should you should really have to provide vegetables or something like disease should be common in a in a in people who don't eat vegetables I think um, let's look at the population graph so we've gotten almost 90 people here maybe 85 and well exactly 85 actually 
We'll be able to expand to a new area earlier than this if, if you like, and you don't really need to build these extra buildings that I'm showing off. You don't need uh, even one trader necessarily. But we have gotten to the point where we have a uh, forester lodge here and here and here. Um, so three forester lodges and I've, I've gotten a second woodcutter mainly just for providing extra firewood to sell in the trader. You don't really need the second one necessarily at this point. And you could definitely expand. So now that we have our market, uh, an interesting thing will happen. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and add another Forester Lodge and I'll start to demonstrate that. We'll just stick it in an area like here, maybe. Just trying to centralize it. Yeah, I'll put that there. Okay, nearly done with the first batch of buildings here. I did a forester lodge, a gatherer's hut, a storage barn, and three stone houses, and a woodcutter. So I've switched to stone here just so these people living out in the boonies are a little bit warmer in case they find they have an urge to go all the way back. There's no problem with that. And I've built this storage barn a little bit closer to the gatherer's hut than the next nearest storage barn, which is important for keeping this little community stocked with food, so they don't have to go out for food. And as soon as I employ a third woodcutter, they'll also have a supply of uh, firewood here in these stockpiles. I made it so that the forester lodge should pick this as the closest stockpile, and in fact, that's where he's sticking logs and the woodcutter should be able to bring wood from there to this stockpile here. So this is our temporary stockpile for firewood until we have a market that's here. So all of this is kind of like extra cautious construction to make sure we don't have any issues, any uh, people walking long distances, freezing, having inefficiencies while establishing this new uh, town center. This is the first time we've built any houses that aren't right here. And remember, this is kind of identical to the solution that we used to start the game off. This uh, configuration of buildings is sufficient to last years, even if we were to com completely cut it off from the rest of civilization. And now our third stone house is complete. Um, that would be exactly the right number of people. So we've got three foresters, two gatherers, and one woodcutter, which makes six. Um, to have six adults, except one of them is embarrassingly young and is still a student who's commuting all the way back here, uh, which means somebody is commuting out here to do the work they would be doing from this house. Um, so yeah, that doesn't work out perfectly. You can like tweak it uh, so that doesn't happen by like reducing the number of foresters that will work at this particular lodge. It's fine if there's only two. Let's see if that solves the problem. So uh, da -da -da. yeah, so now locals only working at these spots. Nobody has to actually go through this path for their job. So with this sort of technique, this actually could be much, much farther. It could be you know, way out here, and this would still, this still mostly work. People would have to come out to build, but um, with stone houses, uh, people aren't going to really have to go too far. Oh, and now my uh, cattle are sick, and since I only have one pasture of cattle, they're probably all going to die, and I'll have to just start over with them from the trader. There is a little bit of danger of running out of certain things for short periods of time if they get carried off by vendors to go to the main market. Uh, so, unfortunately these people aren't going to be super healthy because they're going to be mainly getting food out of this storage barn and this storage barn. So they get uh, some variety, but not as much as everyone else. So we supposedly have our first nomads. It's only eight, 
So I'm just gonna go for it, I think. Oh, and our tools went down to, to zero, okay. Need one of you to be a blacksmith. Oh, and now we do have some coal so we can switch to steel. That's a good idea. So, we need a bunch more homes. Let's go for it. And we're going to need some more stone to make those homes. Builders are still at it over here, and our market is already nearly stocked up. Doesn't have any tools yet, because we're still a little bit low on tools. And we only need... We only absolutely need this house to be finished and one more. Oh, never mind. So uh, enough uh, old people have died in our original town center to absorb most of the nomads. But of course, we, we still have people who are aging up here in town and, and don't have anywhere to move out to. So we're going to go ahead and continue building these, even though we don't absolutely need them. Um, we needed at least, you know, one or two in order to... Uh, be able to staff our market. What am I doing? I need eight. Uh, 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 uh. Ugh. Yeah, that's the hardest part of the game, multiplication. So people are more than willing to uh, move into the new houses, especially as we're still clearing, clearing stuff away out here. We can uh, make use of some laborers. So now after the influx of nomads, I've got so many people, I don't really have enough work for them to do. Uh, but I, I should have no trouble feeding them. And that's basically it. Now I have a well-established town center that will function more or less independently. Uh, some people will naturally travel back and forth a bit. Uh, depending on what job they're trying to do and how the balance of people works out. But as long as you have a little bit of a slush of, you know, laborers and builders, for instance, that aren't really doing anything in particular, they'll kind of uh, be able to make room for other people. So naturally, you can extend this process. You can keep building into new areas, taking control of different corners of the map. So from this point here, we should be able to you know, control these areas, adding new uh, foresters to keep those uh, maintained, and then maybe we'll be able to get access to these through yet another uh, center, maybe over in this area, or this area, or this area. But the fact that we're able to establish a new little town that is able to operate independently. That means when winter falls and people are in danger of freezing to death, nobody is forced marching back and forth. Um, the only other thing you need to look out for is making sure you're replicating uh, the services that you had. So, for instance, I'm pretty soon going to want to add a schoolhouse over here, or maybe you could say it's okay for a bit to have this, at least in adjacent centers, but if I made a third one, I would definitely want to have a school out there, just so people aren't going long, long, long distances. And naturally, when you add a new town center and you staff it with nomads, you're generally going to see a dip in your education and your happiness and your health, and then over time that will go back up as that market gets filled with different kinds of food and the nomads get up to speed. So that's it for how to play Banished. Uh, with those tips you should be able to reach whatever sort of goal you want, uh, whatever you consider winning in a game that doesn't have any win conditions. Uh, I do have a few smaller tips that I'm going to try to put into a separate video if you want to watch that. And of course I'll be continuing on with this town in order to go for a perfect game, so stay tuned for that as well. Thanks for watching.